Well, hello everyone. I'm really excited to share with you today alcohol inks. And my friend Wailan and I have been working in alcohol inks for the last couple of years and absolutely love them. I even have friends who now call themselves inkaholics. And this is all they do. They gave up watercolor for their alcohol inks. They're really wonderful. They have a real vibrancy that you don't get in watercolor. They're very heavily pigmented. Um, they're fast drying, they're dye based, and best of all, they're acid free. So what we've done is we've just gotten every color available. They're all, there's different makes, the pinata and the Adirondacks. And um, we, I got the pinata and they're wonderful inks. These are all the colors that are available. And you can see it's, it's gotten pretty battered up with, quite, with usage. <laughs> but all of these colors are just magnificent, including silvers and whites and golds. And so what we've been doing is experimenting with a lot of different surfaces. And it turns out that the best surfaces for this are, have to be non-porous. So I'm going to share with you a few that we have that we've been enjoying. Here you can see a finished piece all framed up. They're absolutely glorious when you get them under the glass and in a frame and a mat. Um, this one here happens to be Yupo. And Yupo actually is my favorite. To me, Yupo is the holy grail of alcohol ink. The Yupo comes in three different weights. The first one is a light surface, then a medium surface, and a heavy surface and I really recommend using a heavier surface. And we have some here available at the gallery. And what we did is we kind of broke them down into sizes because when you buy the paper in bulk, it's absolutely huge. And we have the facilities here to set it up and cut it down in our frame shop. And so Jonathan, every now and then I see him donning a pair of white gloves and he goes down to the frame shop to cut into these various sizes here. Let me line them up for you. So we have uh, four and three quarters by four and three quarters for 38 cents, five by seven for 53 cents, seven by seven for 74 cents, and then this size here, that which it's a little bigger than this, seven and a half by 10 and a half, and that's a dollar 18. And this is the heavy weight. And we also, have mats for each of these sizes. So the two smaller sizes are $5 each, the two larger sizes are $8 each, they all come with backings and sleeves. So I encourage you to think about that for when you do your work. You can also just buy Yupo paper anywhere. So let's get started. Well one of my very favorite surfaces to work on I would say I like Yupo a little bit better, but the tiles are fantastic, especially tiles that have a very glossy surface. Now I picked this up at Menards for about 34 cents. And you can also buy the ones that are a flat surface, but I prefer the glossy, it's, it's much better. And if you really check it out, I had a student one time who hit the jackpot. She stopped at a resource store where people bring in leftover tiles from projects and she just happened to hit it right, got them for very low price. So you might want to consider that. I'm going to quickly put together a little tile here. And I just always am thinking shapes and movement and how is this going to attach to the edge of the surface that we're working on. And so I'm kind of having fun just building a little wall here, taking your eye across, and maybe up over here. And I thought I would do very limited color. I'm going to try some silver. So this will give me some grays. And just more or less interact them with what's here. When I get to the edge, especially on tiles, I make a point of going all the way to the edge. And then I do want a color that's going to act as the 
accent. This is really pretty. This is a Baja Blue. So we'll combine it with the gray. We'll put it next to the black. And again, I'm thinking about the edge, the edge of the tile coming across, interlocking. It's really fun. And the isopropyl alcohol comes in two flavors, 91% and 70%. And be sure you get the 91% might not be out on the shelf you might have to ask for it but this will give you some really interesting little circles mostly and it does go away so I'm going to give that just a little minute to rest but I think it's kind of fun just to have this broken up by the the movement there of the alcohol interacting with the ink and I'm thinking about adding another little color accent here. This is actually a green. It's called lime green. Now you're not going to see the lime green very well because it's, it almost looks like black. So what I'm going to do is just give it a little touch of this extender. And this is a different kind of alcohol. And you can see it's really invasive. But it's really good for softening edges and moving it. It's also good for cleaning up and it's got a number of uses. But watch this. This is going to give me some beautiful soft edges. Oh yeah, I like it. It's like watching slow motion. But I always recommend using this with caution. It can really, really take over. So I think I'm going to come back with my black because I want to have this, some of these edges kind of clean. And we'll just keep it nice and simple. Now if you want to use these tiles and design them to be used as a trivet where you're going to be putting really hot really hot objects onto the surface then you have to give a protective coating and I understand that you can get this at a store that that sells products for cars and it's about $18 for a can and you put a spray on it and that supposedly will protect it from heat um, but if you just want to think of these as a decorative tile to put up on the wall, they're, they're fine right now. And some, sometimes you'll see, see it mentioned that they think it's a really good idea to put a spray on it, like a Krylon acrylic matte or gloss spray, and I would recommend a gloss spray. Now I can see some edges over here that I would like to so, go right off the edge with. This happens to be the 91%. You can see it also acts to move the surface. Well, I think that's going to be it. I'm going to add just another little bit of green here. A little bit more alcohol. And we've got a finished tile. Another surface that's been recommended is to use a canvas. Now canvas is not a surface that is non-porous, it's very absorbent, but I thought I would try it and you have to prepare the surface. Now I got on the internet, which is a great idea if you haven't done it, hit YouTube, there's just all kinds of ideas out there. And this one gal suggested using Kills 2, it's a latex primer, it's been around forever, and so I put a coat of that on. And so I'm going to give this a try. And again, I'm going to start with some colors that I, I love, the drama from, from this black. Oh my gosh, this is fun. And again, I want to link it with the edge of the surface here. 
Now these aren't going to interact as much because they're going right into the surface. But this is actually kind of fun. It gives you just a little bit more control. So again, I'm thinking about my shapes. How do these shapes relate to each other? And I always like to attach them. See, we can pull this down. I actually like this surface. It's got a lot of control. <laughs> and this time I want to get a little jazzier. I love the gold. The gold is beautiful. So we're going to put some of this gold in here. And you have to shake it until you hear the, the little ball. You can see I wasn't getting the gold. That little ball has to disturb the gold in there and get it going. There, now we're cooking. So we're going to come over here with the gold. Interlock it with the black. Maybe do a little independent breakout here. I have to tell you, it's, it's incredible when you go on the internet how many different ideas are out there. And one of them is to make your own alcohol inks. And so you would take the 91% isopropyl alcohol to, to do it. And you can do it out of writ dyes, you can do it with um, old pens. They show you doing it. And the pens, uh, you actually have to pull them apart and cut the tips off and dip them in the alcohol and let the alcohol absorb the ink. You also can do it with, uh, ooh, I like what's happening here. It, it will just go on and on, all the different things you can use. You can also do it with pastels. And they actually just crush them a little bit, put them in with the alcohol, and they have to just sit for a little while. Ooh, this is fun. But one of my favorite experiences, one of the gals came to class, and she had made her own alcohol inks out of Kool-Aid. And they had spent a good part of their summer just playing with these Kool-Aid alcohol inks at their cabin. <laughs> they actually worked quite well. I did a couple with them. They smelled good too. They smelled like lime Kool-Aid and cherry Kool-Aid. It was fun. So again, I want to get this nice color accent. My favorite is the gold. I can hardly ever do a piece without gold in it. We're going to try using the ethanol alcohol. This is the one that's called the extender. And it really does do a great job. So just putting a little bit of this in here now, in some areas where I want to extend it, you'll see it will soften and move it. I think I'm going to soften it up here, a little bit here. Ooh, this is fun. This is really nice. Usually when I do a piece on canvas, I'm always concerned about the edges. This happens to have a deep profile. But with the alcohol inks, you can't be picking this up and turning it around. So what I want to do is just leave it, not worry about the edges. And this will end up being framed with a deep profile frame. And then if you want to fill in any of these, just get out a stick. Another popular thing is to blow it around with a straw.
And the stick is nice because you can come in and do some finer lines. Well, I think this has a, a really nice minimal feel to it. I think I'm just going to add a few little linear shapes and be done. I like it. It's I always tease my students. You got to know when to hold them and you got to know when to fold them. And I think it's time to fold this one. I want one more little black over here. Okay, I'm just going to do it with the black. So, there you go. That was really fun. It was a great surface to work on. It's, it's uh, held the color very well. It's going to have a little bit of a canvas look to it when it's done. It's not going to be quite as glossy as on the tiles. But it's definitely a consideration. Okay, another wonderful surface is glass and so a lot of times if you've got a frame what you can do is cut a piece of glass to fit the frame and again just go ahead use this surface I've got a white paper under it to give it just that added whiteness because I'm working on this dark surface so I really need to think about my colors here. I think I'm going to work in cool colors. So I'm going to work with my blues. And this is a completely non-porous surface. And when you frame it, you're going to have to put that support under it of white. And some people actually put them in a window, obviously. <laughs> so again, I'm thinking about my shapes. I'm thinking about linking to the edges. I'm going to pull this one down over here. I always like to leave some rest areas. I'm going to add another color. This is the lime green. And I like to go like, okay, if the lime green's going to come here, I'll skip across, come over here, maybe come to the edge, maybe come down, link it again. So I always like to think about the movement. And this is the 91% isopropyl alcohol, which is going to give me some nice broken shapes. And this time I'm going to add some gold in with the cooler colors. The gold is stunning. You absolutely can't go wrong with this gold. If you're just getting a starter set, I always say buy two jars of gold. <laughs> just because it's so beautiful. And depending on how you're going to present this. If you're going to have it on a, against a window, I would consider leaving more open spaces. So again, maybe you want to put some of this isopropyl. No. Ethanol. That's a little help from my chemist friend here. The extender is the ethanol. The 91% is the isopropyl. And they both act very differently. So now this is going to extend. You're going to see these edges soften. It's very invasive. It's kind of fun. So we're just going to break this up a little bit. Get some softer edges.
Mm, that's really kind of pretty, that softness. Let's put some more over here. Now, I also like that real high contrast with the black. I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Maybe just a little bit with the, the spray. When you spray, of course, don't inhale. <laughs> but um, you get this really exciting reaction, and then it settles down again. But it, it usually leaves a little residue of texture that I like. So again, try the glass, maybe against a window, maybe behind a frame. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, now we're down to the holy grail of alcohol ink surfaces, the UPO. This is the heavyweight UPO, and this is going to, this was specifically cut to fit a mat this size, and I really recommend that. Then you don't have to do custom uh, framing. It's really great just to be able to have this. Oops, I guess I am going to use green. <laughs> I looked at this and thought it was black. Oh, it is black. It's just got a little green on it. I love surprises, as you know. So I usually work in very curvilinear shapes, so I'm going to try not quite so curvilinear this time. A little straighter. I don't think it's going to stay that way, but I think it's good to have a plan. So again, I'm just going to dance across, touch the edges, think about thin lines, thick lines, and I really want to have some fun with the color. And of course, i got to use gold. Oh, the gold is the best. So we're going to put the gold in kind of up here a little higher. We're going to let some of that tip a little. And I'm going to do a little bit of extender to move it. Back and forth. So we're just going to let these move a little. Ooh, that's fun. That extender is powerful and aggressive. So just keep that in mind whenever you're working with it. It immediately softens the edge and it will move. Yeah, I like that. You can always have a stick handy to move the color. If you want to do some more blending, you can also blow it around with a straw. Oh, I like it. Now I want to do again, I, I want to do again a color accent. This time I'm going to do a little Kalamata orange, another gorgeous color. So again, I'm going to interlock it and link it with what I have here. Maybe take us off the edge here. And just a little bit more black again. My black is heavy enough that I can pick it up and do some wonderful little linear shapes here. Hmm, I 
feels good. I think I'll also do a couple straight ones. And there's another color I'm absolutely in love with. Give it a little shake. It's called the Chili Pepper. This is a really hot color. So I'm going to combine this with the orange to give us a nice red. You can just see how vibrant these colors are. And they work so well with the Yupo. The Yupo is fantastic. Heavyweight Yupo. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like this. I think I'm almost done. Just a little touch. Pull some of that red in. Hmm, I like the clean white coming around here. I think I'm going to do just a little bit more gold up here. Well, I'm almost done here. So, you're very lucky. I am going to turn this over now to my friend Wylan Lorber. She and I have worked together since early in the 2000s. 2002, 4, 5, oh, 5, 2005. And she has been such a helpful person here coming in. First of all, she brought us wonderful food. To all the workshops. Then she started just really taking off with her painting skills to the point where now she has her own following. She teaches classes here in the gallery in Eau Claire and everybody loves her. She's fantastic. So she's going to share with you how you can take alcohol inks into a completely different direction using just a few drops. <laughs> This, is, this had to be painful for her to watch this today. <laughs> so with just a few drops, and I came up with the idea to add this lovely little, very inexpensive palette. And so all of the colors have a designated spot. And she's going to share with you how to use the alcohol inks and create a realistic interpretation. So I'm going to and you'll also find it interesting. She's got a chemistry background. She taught school for years and years, finally retired, took up art as her next love, and has taken off with it. I know you're going to enjoy her. Hi, my name is Wailan Loba, a friend of Colin, like she introduced me. And the first time when I start working with alcohol ink is basically the, the abstract design, and I love doing it. And then one day I saw someone using the alcohol ink and painted it with a brush. And I thought I was so inspired by that. So then I started working and trying to paint with alcohol ink. And of course my first one that I did have all the mistakes that I have been making. So now what I have done is I did quite a few different uh, painting using some try and error. So finally I just kind of get the nature of the alcohol ink and then from there I was able to paint a lot of different subjects. So I'm just going to start to show you my journey in painting with alcohol ink. And the first piece I did was as simple as you can get. This is a very simple one, just I painted, the, the title is Sumac. And I picked sumac because it's simple and even though I don't know a lot about alcohol ink and I can still pull it off by just using the pigment as well as the two alcohols which I'm going to talk about as we go through the demo. Now after that I started to get a little bit more detail now and I was using 
a brush and I can with some control I was able to do the bird houses and actually paint in some of the flowers but you can see that I basically just painted the subject without much background other than the white of the yupo. The next one I want to show you is I'm actually trying to paint some landscape and I was able to put some distant hills and water and of course the building and I want to show you the next one and then I get a little bit more brave and actually paint a subject that has a lot more story to tell it is uh, the flowers I mean the vase is my main subject and I was able to control a little bit using the alcohol ink pigment as well as the alcohol to actually paint the outside of a window so after trying a little bit of different background I started to actually paint with background now and they are more of a looser abstract look and then my subject will be more in detail this is another example that other than just the flowers you can do subject this is a really cute um, birdhouse and you can also do vegetation in the background or just put in some color so that it is not totally white all the time and then I start to get into actually architecture and uh, alcohol ink is great because you can actually put in your color and then you're going to use your alcohol and you can start streaking them so that it get textures and again I always like to put something in the background over the window just and other than this I love doing birds I have a friend who is a photographer and he's an ornithologist uh, so I, some of the pictures actually came from him and this is actually a chickadee even though they are, didn't have a lot of color however when you start painting them or pay attention to the chickadee actually there is some um, broad sienna color in the body part and then I get some berries in them and then I also try to do another bird which is a cardinal and which is actually a challenge to do because it has so much red in the body so you have to use different color and layer them so that you can present them the way it is okay before we get started painting I'm going to suggest you how to make a suggestion on how to set up a palette and you see that Colin have the same thing because we set it up together and play together okay so uh, the material I like to paint on a 5 by 7 so that it framed up really nice on a 8 by 10 frame and with an opening of about 5 by 7 and then um, the next thing is the brushes. You basically only need three brushes. You need a small one, a mid-sized one, and a little bigger one. That's all you really need. And once in a while, I found an old brush, I don't know what to do. I just put it in my palette for alcohol ink. Um, and then what you need to know is there are two kinds of alcohol that like Colin has mentioned because I'm a chemist so I have the tendency to put chemical names on them and this one is a 91% isopropyl alcohol all you need to know about that is it vaporizes very quickly so if you just want to soften something just a little bit this is the alcohol to use but the, the other alcohol is actually uh, is denatured ethanol and what it is, is it vaporizes just a little bit slower than the isopropyl. So, but you got to be careful because they do vaporize slower. That means it has time to move around and you start to chew up some of the pigment that you put in. So you got to use this carefully. But it is great 
when you want to reactivate your palette. So if you take a look, I, we have labeled them so that you know your colors. But whatever you don't finish using, you don't have to worry. Just leave it in there. It will dry it up in less than 30 seconds. And then when you want to use it again, you do not need to add any more paint as long as you see pigment. All you really need to do is wet your brush with either the either alcohol before you go back into your uh, palette or into the well. So if your brush started to get sticky and tacky, it's telling you that it is too much pigment. And so what you need to do is you need to put a drop of alcohol on it and then scrape it back into the well. So you really do not waste any uh, pigment at all, which is different from uh, watercolor when you wash your brush, you lose your pigment. For alcohol ink, you can just put them back. So uh, that's all the tips I can give you for now. And so then you're gonna get more tips as we started to paint. All right, we're ready to get started. The first thing I draw, do is I actually draw on the UPO to get my image. And I used to do that using uh, a black Statler pen, permanent, permanent pen. And the one thing about using the pen is that all the ink can be dissolved when you use the alcohol on it. So that means your painting is going to have a little gray tone where the line was. So if you do want to, if you do like the gray tone, especially when you're doing a building or in the shade, then don't overdo it because otherwise your painting have the tendency to be pretty dark. Okay. And then recently, I actually started to draw with a 2B pencil. And I always like to use mechanical pencil because I don't have to sharpen them. And so, especially when you're doing flowers and birds, when you want to have this bright, colorful uh, appearance, I've started to use pencil. So I'm just going to show you a couple of examples that I have done drawing. This is a drawing of a chickadee with some berries and grapes on it. And I like to draw them a little light. The advantage of using a pencil is you can actually do the detail pretty well. And then if you didn't like it, you can just get a really good eraser and it erase pretty well. And I just want to show you another one I have drawn. And this is a, uh, of course, cardinal because I'll be teaching cardinal in watercolor. So I'll just practice drawing them. What I have here is two butterfly. One is using black ink drawing on it and then the other one is using pencil and you can see the dark lines of the ink still get left if you did not dissolve it with alcohol however if you dissolve it with alcohol you still get a little bit of fine line to it so if you like the lines you may try the ink pen and if you didn't like the shadows and the line, then you can just use pencil. Okay, what I have drawn out is actually we're going to paint this uh, tiger swallow tail. And I took some of these pictures actually right in my garden. And this is when the azalea was blooming. So, um, and I'm, my plan is to have the butterfly in details where the background is going to be loosely painted to represent flowers. All right, let's get started with the painting. The first thing I wanted to do is when you have multi, uh, multiple colors, the good tip is to start with the lightest one first. For example, if you look at this one, I'm going to start with the uh, sunlight yellow first because I see the yellow here and then I want to avoid cleaning my brush because when you do that you're going to waste all your pigment 
So I start with the, uh, the sunlight yellow and then I'm going a little bit darker into the uh, calabasa orange as well as the tangerine which have given it a warm color there. And then I will come back and do all my color first. And then, if, then after that, I will clean my brush, which I'm going to show you when I get to it. So, now I'm looking at my yellow and it's kind of have very really little pigment on it. So I will put only a drop. That's all you need because we are not doing abstract. We don't need that much. And a drop from all my first, uh, from the mistake I made my first painting. I just go straight in and paint it and my brush was sticky everything got stuck together so I realized that that is not how you should do it so the first thing you want to do is you need to wet your brush with one of the alcohol so you can try the 91% and see how it works for you or be careful if you don't want to try the extender because it will work for you too so now I put a drop in there and in the meantime, it will start vaporizing because all the pigment is dissolved in alcohol. So now you watch, you can, I'm going to wet it. My brush is still dirty, you can tell because it started to give you a gray color. So I can just come back and pick it up. Okay, and you can tell how dirty it is. Now I'm going to do that one more time, wet it with the alcohol, come in. I'm going to start putting in all my yellows where it should be. So let me see, first thing is start from here, these are my yellows. And you can just keep going and you can see it. I only use one drop of alcohol and I'm painting for a long time. And then I can re-wet it a little bit so that my, my uh, ink is not so concentrated. Come back here and then do the other side of my butterfly which is right here. And then come in here and then come in here and then there's a break in there and then just come in and get all your yellows in and then if you want it thicker you can come back and introduce more color now the next thing I want to do is because I'm using harmonically the color going from yellow to uh, calabasa orange I don't really have to wash my brush that much and that is the advantage again wet it and I still have some uh, orange in my in my well so I do not need to get another drop in there. I'm just going to reactivate it. So I'm just going to the top on the side there, just on the side of the well, pick up some orange because I don't want a lot. If you can take a look at the reference, you only use very little orange. So I come in here and just drop them in there and drop some in here. And you don't have to worry about, oh, they are a little hard because we're going to actually take care of those little things after. Right now the focus is just to get the color that you want into the right place. Okay and then I see a little bit of uh, darker color, warmer color like the darker orange and then down here I have a little bit there, I have a little bit there and then I'm just gonna come in here and just like a placemaker to put in a little bit of warm color in here so that I know where, where it goes later on. Alright, now I want to get it even darker so I'm going to use 
tangerine and you can see that I'm wetting my brush again and I didn't need to use I didn't need to wash my brush or clean my brush because the color is just increased in intensity in the yellow tone that way so I'm gonna come in now to my tangerine and again I just have to wet it and just pick up what is left in my palette from who knows when I used it so now come back here and you can just get some darker color in there for now all right so now I want to change my color to putting in the blue so now I need to wash my brush so now you can if you want to save some of the pigment in a yellow tone you can wear it and go to a clean area of your well and just squeeze them out see you can just save your pigment that way because otherwise you're just wasting them and I like to use those little diluted pigment for the background the soft look because eventually they become gray which is perfect for background and you can see that look at how much yellow I can get out of my brush okay and so now we're going to wipe it on the tissue and you can see that there are still quite a bit of yellow and the reason that I want to get this really clean is because I want to go into the blue color and blue and yellow will turn it green so you need to think about that kind of things when you want to uh, clean your brush or when you need to clean your brush okay I think I'm good now so now I'm gonna go into my Baja blue and I don't have much Baja blue so I need to put again one drop of Baja blue and sometimes even though you want that one drop the second one will come along but that's fine again I'm going to just wet my brush a little bit because again just to remind you that 91% alcohol do dry very quickly so now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in my blue and Baja blue is the lighter blue which is what you want put in the and then I'll get stronger because as the, as the alcohol dries your pigment have the tendency to get much stronger so that's alright we can fix it later again you basically just want to put where your blue is and any place that you see some blue just put them put them in okay now I wanted to get into a darker blue which is the sapphire blue so again I'm not washing my brush because I'm just going into another blue I'm just gonna wet my brush my sapphire blue is is has some pigment left from previous use so I just come in here with the alcohol scrape it down a little bit and if you look at my reference the, you have a little darker blue area at the bottom so I just come in and just put some of the dark blue in there and basically you just want to put in the color where you need to and then all the other details will come and we're going to work it with just the alcohol later on and then I have a little blue coming up on the top of this so I'm just gonna put just a few dots in there not worrying about how accurate you are and then there are some kind of a little blue edge on there those little fuzz of the uh, butterfly alright now what I want to do is I'm going to introduce the black and I need I'm going to have quite a bit of black so I'm going to put the Matilla black now I have quite a bit of black to do so I may try two drops one 
too. And I, again, I'm not going to wash my brush because the black will overpower and take over the blue. So now, again, I'm going to dampen up my brush a little bit using 91%. And then I'm going to come in and just quickly put in my black. I like to get them in a little light first and then come back and make them darker later. So then you're going to get the value change from gray to uh, from gray to black so that it's not just all black all at once. So now I'm just going to basically I, I like to do them a little lighter first so that you can place all the color where you want them. This kind of this is how the way you do this is don't try to draw a straight line just do like a little bit like a dotted line it just give it so that it doesn't have the harsh look and then this one have a little bit darker black here and then you have a little bit of black streak down here and then a little black on this side and then I have a little bit black and you don't want to get so strong the first time so that it just look um, very I don't know how to put it stiff so now you just get this light color first And then some more down here. I think I got one more than it has, but I just have to fix it, make it a little bit stronger. And then there are some on this side too. I try to leave some white because the reference do have some white. And you can see that as I'm working with it, some of the alcohol has evaporated from the well. It started to look a little darker but if it's too dark there is a way that you can actually lighten it which I'm going to show you and that's why I just make this side a little bit darker so that you get a chance to see how we can actually eliminate some of the dark color okay and then continue I'm going to just get this a little bit better here. Do you see now I can come back and just darken some of the area. But it got so dry that I do have to put a drop of again 91% back to lighten it a little bit before I continue to do my darks. need some more because I keep adding a little. so basically you're not adding more uh, pigment you're just adding the alcohol to to bring back your pigment so that it's not too too thick so now you just continue to just expose the area that are dark and they're a little bit stiff for now, but that's okay. We will take care of those stiff edges later on. Especially on this side, they are, they are really stiff. Okay, now I can come back and actually darken the, the blacks of the wing. And you can actually darken part of it and leave the other part a little lighter. 
and then we can come back and then soften it with the alcohol and then that will give you the softer look but for now I just want to get the dark back in then have a little bit darker here my eye there and the body needs to be a little bit darker again basically you are going over the first layer of gray that you put in and now that you know that's where you want it you can come back and make it more obvious just a few more over there few more darks and my brush again getting sticky so just remember when you get sticky just put a drop of a uh, uh, isopropyl on it and again it will come back to life it doesn't stick and I do like to have the 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 color changes a little bit so that the value is not exactly the same so that it doesn't look so flat and if you lose your white don't panic there is a way to get them back Alright, now I want to do is I need to get those fine line out so they have a soft look. So I'm going to change to a light, a smaller brush. Oops, that's what you get when you use old brushes, they all fall apart on you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go to a much smaller brush, a number one brush so that it's a little bit smaller and I'm just going to use very little color and what I want to do is get this line so I want them to be as tiny as I can get it and that's why it's good that when you draw your uh, images this little fine line you probably need to put them in because it's hard to make them up because these are identification for butterflies so it just take a little time just to draw them in and because you cannot say trying to sit here and figure it out because your brush will dry up right away and then you have to wet it again so when you have pigment on your brush you do have to put it down otherwise you have to redo the alcohol ink again or with to wet it again so anyway I'm getting close to putting in the color now what I need to do is come back and make the butterfly look a little better all right the first thing I want to do is I'm going to wet the tip of my brush take some of this out and come in here and start to soften some of these edges especially edges like here you can put a little bit more ink in there and then come back and key up some of the area that you wanted again and then put a little bit of edge on here and then put a little bit more edge on here so that you define your butterfly a little better and then now what I want to do is again I'm going to put a drop in here squeeze it dry a little bit come back in and just kind of round up some of this area that you just the white that you were reserving just get them a little bit softer and you 
may want to shape it a little bit more. Now what I want to do now is, if you look on your butterfly, on the blue part, there are some darks in it. So I'm going to come in here and put some more dark at the, over there first. And then I'm going to come back with the blue and get my blue in so that you can see it better. I just want to make my dark, the blue a little bit better now. Now what you want to do now is to get your alcohol back, dry it so that it doesn't have a lot of pigment on it, and then come back on the top here is lighter, so I'm going to come back and dot the light on it, and then you touch it with your tissue to get the light. If you don't touch it with the tissue, then your light will disappear. So again, you come back here, wet your brush, dry it up a little bit, touch it with your tissue. And then that will give you that, the value change. Again, come back in here, touch it with the tissue. And I actually have a smaller brush that I'm going to try. Dry it a little bit. That's better. And then you come back in here. You do the dot 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 motion so that you can just see that they kind of changes that way. And sometimes it takes a while for it to give you what you want, but you just keep at it. And then I even come in here and do some of the on the black so that they don't look very flat. So you continue to work. And then Keep going down to a smaller brush if you are not getting the details that you want. The brush that I'm using actually is a rigger. Long, skinny, with very few hairs on it. And then you can actually get in the details of this butterfly here, some of this light color. And you can come in and define this a little better now. down here and now you get into the details like some of the dark will come down more and then you have this curvature here someone is working outside Okay, now what you want to do is 
get this clean up a little bit now I want to go into actually to reapply some of the yellow okay again I want to make sure if I'm changing brush I always check and make sure that my brush is rather clean especially I want to go back into the yellow and the richer color so now I think this is good enough I'm gonna come in now I'm gonna key in some more yellow and push them into my black to soften those edges brush is a little still a little bit dirty and then to soften them you just kind of stroke it I need a little bit more yellow because it's not looking giving me the yellow that I wanted Too much alcohol in it so when things start to flare up too much that means you had a little bit more alcohol than you want so I just come back and redo it now what you're doing is you try to give it some uh, texture and so when you do that you kind of stroke it in the direction of the the wing the curvature is those are important features And then there are a little bit of the yellow in the body. And then I'm going to add a little bit more um, orange onto the wing at the location that shows it. Oh, that's a little bit more than I want. If you just quickly you use your tissue clean your brush and come back and it basically can take care of the excess color that you want okay and then I can do this darker there now what I want to do is I want to clean up some of this white area that is, is supposed to be there so I'm just going to use a clean brush so you this time you need to clean your brush pretty well so that all you have is going to be just alcohol all right so now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to accentuate this white I'm going to make the shape and then I have to dab it off right away and sometimes it may take more than one time to do it just keep at it and eventually you can achieve those little moon shape the moon shape of the the pattern on your on your butterfly okay so you can actually spend the time just playing with it until you're happy with the total butterfly but what I want to do is actually go into putting in the flowers and when I put in the flowers the technique is pretty much like doing the uh, abstract part okay so and I like to always repeat the color of my subject into my background so I would use the yellow I would use the calabasa orange as well as the tangerine and I probably need to put a little bit of the blue into my background and then I'm gonna get a little red in there so that it represents that I actually have a, my butterfly is sitting on a flower like that okay this is just going to be my inspiration of the flower 
but I'm going to do it loosely so that you actually don't see them as an azalea. Like I said before, we're going to use some yellow, some calabasa orange, some tangerine, and then we're going to add the red to it, and then we're going to let it move. So think about it. My butterfly, the line is this way. So my intention is to have my flower go more like in this direction so that it kind of have a counter movement. So now that you have decided what you want to do, then you, the first thing I like to do is, now this has got to be really careful because you're using alcohol and you want to move it using your alcohol. So I will put some, just put some dots in here, but stay away from your butterfly, otherwise you're gonna lose a few wings or a few part of the butterfly. I have done it before, I lost a, a butterfly wing and I have to come back and redo it. So I'm just gonna come in and just put some yellow in here, which is what I want to do. Okay, My, again, I'm thinking of going in that direction. And then the next color I want to put in is my color Basa Orange. And basically I just drop in the color, maybe a little bit more there. And bring it up to my butterfly. And then the next thing I want to add is my favorite color. Colin and I have a lot of things in common. Our favorite color, <laughs> chili pepper. So then you put them in and you want to put it in a place that it gives you some really strong contrast. Now, so these are just, maybe put them in this direction. Now, after you get that, what you want to do now is to use the alcohol to move it. Sometimes I would add this on a drop in there and you will let it run just like the way you did the um, abstract. You just kind of get the background first and then you can coax it with your brush to places that it didn't go to if you want. And I can actually show you what the ethanol can do too. Because when you put the ethanol, it sits there for a long time. It doesn't, it doesn't vaporize as quickly. Now, I did say that I want to do a little bit of blue, but I think I'm going to wait a little bit longer. And then this is some ethanol. And what I want to do is, I'm going to put some more red in here. And if I'm using ethanol, and this will stick around a little bit longer than the uh, isopropyl alcohol. And so now what I can do now is to move my flowers towards the top. So again, I can move by putting in a few drops of 91% first. And then you can use your brush to move it. And my, actually I did not put, pick up any pigment. This is just like washing off my brush. Now I'm going to come in and pick up some yellow. And just softly let it go up and then I may come back in see my ethanol is still working hard there and one suggestion though is when you're doing this part is to limit the number of colors you are using because they do run into each other a lot and if you do not like mud then you may want to think about not overdo with all kinds of color for, on your palette. It's just a suggestion.
And now what I want to do is I'm going to clean my brush a little bit because I want to go into my blue. Or better yet, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to use another brush to work on using the blue. Then I don't have to try to clean them so perfectly clean and not to worry about it. So I may just put a little blue in here just to bounce it off and also bring the blue up. And the blue with the yellow turns a little bit green which is kind of nice. And then with the red it turns a little bit of a purple color which is also good. And then I'm going to come in with just a little bit of the sapphire. Sapphire blue, just to do a little bit dark in there. And then put a bit, just a little bit dark in there. And now I'm going to come back with my yellow. I just changed brush so that I don't have to do too much cleaning. I'm just going to soften this. And soften that. Now after that you want to soften the edges and to soften the edges what you want to do is put the alcohol outside the pigment. And then let it run into the color and then tip it back out. And let it tip it back out and then that will really soften it now I really like to not have it get to my butterfly so when it get close to the butterfly you can use a brush to just control it a little bit better and so now you can let it catch a little bit of the red by tipping it down let it go in some more and then as you get as it get into your butterfly flatten it so that it doesn't go and I was at home I was doing that I was excited so I went to look at it I put it up on my wall and I pick up my glass take a drink a drop of alcohol wash the whole line down my butterfly so I have to repaint that part. So just be careful when you're using those alcohol. And let's say you run into it like this guy is doing. So you can actually dab it off, kind of let it stop, and then just repaint that part that get washed away. Okay? So, and you can just basically keep playing with it and keep changing part of the things that you don't like. And, you know, work on it for another 10 minutes or 15 minutes, then you should stop. Now what I want to show you is to get some of the white back, let's say you have lost some of those. And you're going to see some of those white that I have saved wasn't in a really clean shape, like a moon shape. So what I want to do is you can only use the 91% so that it would not wash out too much. So I'm going to come in here and start it with this guy here and I'm just going to make the shape a little bit better and the thing is even though they are like totally white it's okay if you do not get them as totally white i'm gonna get to my smaller brush here because I'm, if i get the details i sometimes you need to go come to a smaller brush and you have to work it so sometimes it doesn't just come so easily so just keep adding a little bit alcohol Dab it first before you come in and then you pull it off. And I'm going to have a few more of those. Like right here, it's kind of not, sh not a moon shape. So I'm trying to create the moon shape with my brush and then dry it off with your tissue. I'm going to do another one. Like this one is not very white. I'm going to come in here and wash, 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 pull, and then dab it up. 
that and that I have already dark spot there. I'll see whether I can pull one out like this. It takes a while. It's coming. Do another drop. Come back here. And keep working it. And there you get a white spot back. And I'm going to do is just a few little stems that say that, oh, it is a uh, flower. So I may just come in and I'm going to actually start using my yellow first. And so if I didn't like it, that's okay. I can just make it into something else like a flower. So I can just come up here and just put a line like this. And then I have another stem coming through, come up this way. And then maybe a little leaves coming out. And then I may want something to come up to the top so I can actually I'm going to do a little bit of lifting out. And so you do a kind of a reversal, a positive, and then a negative by lifting out. And then maybe do a little bit of shapes, like a little bud or something. And then you just get some more alcohol. You just want it kind of like a, um, a shadow of it. It doesn't have to read exactly what it's supposed to be. Okay, and now what I need to do is, I have the yellow in, I'm just going to use my blue and just tone the my blue right on top of my ye yellow and it will turn green. And then you always want to put the color of your flower in the stem. I learned it from a very good teacher that you always want to tone the color of your flower in the stem. So there you go. Now you have to come back. You have a lot of this back and forth, back and forth things going. Maybe I put a little green for my thing. And then I can make it a little bit, um, have a little bit of shadow. So I'm going to put a little bit of the dark of the black into my stem. And maybe get my leaf a little bit larger. And then now you can do a little bit of softening them. You can also actually put some uh, stem kind of inside your flower. So that it looks like just a little suggestion of that in there. You can always keep coming back and put more things in there. So to a point that you go, oh, I have enough. And then you can stop. The next day you can add some more. <laughs> okay, now I want to come in actually to put my uh, antenna in there. I did not do my antenna yet. So come in here, put the little thing guy. And you do not have to draw, you put your in antenna all the way through because you usually do not see the entire antenna coming across. So I like to just kind of do a suggestion so that you see that there is antenna in there. And then I'm going to come in and just do a little bit of the fuzz on either side of the body.
Fasse là. Ok. So this is basically all you really need to do for painting with alcohol ink. Again, more detailed in your subject and then you can just do the background like you have done using your abstract technique. And I want to thank you for joining me and Colin. And I'm again Weyland Lorber and have fun.